It was a great race to watch, the Gold Cup. It was an even great, greater race to watch if your name happened to be Henry de Bromhead, who's our first guest this morning. Good morning, Henry. Morning. How are you? I'm uh, extremely well, thank you. Just trying to reflect and, and recover from what's been a, a spellbinding week. Just tell me a little bit about what it's been like at home since you got back to your, to your base and just sort of what the place has been like, what the atmosphere has been like. Oh, look, I mean, it's, um, it, it, well, it's been a bit quiet for me. We, we have to quarantine for five days, but, um, uh, it, you know, it's buzzing um, uh, around the place. Absolutely. Um, uh, it's, uh, yeah, just unreal, really. And obviously you went into the week with unbelievable hopes and some fantastic horses. As you said, just you had to pinch yourself when you went out and had a look at them, them every morning. But... Could you, could you possibly have conceived of exactly what it's been like? No, definitely not. I mean, even last year we went with, you know, similar horses, similar team. And, um, you know, and we had a great year with two winners. We were happy. But, you know, it was it, it's so, I suppose, on the back of that even, you know, people were saying last year you could be leading trainer and all this kind of stuff in the build-up. And then we have two winners and, and delighted, but possibly didn't quite fulfill what we had hoped we could do. So, I mean, coming into this year, you're looking at similar horses. Obviously, there's a couple more on the team and whatever else. But still, you know that it can go, it can, you know, it could just be the same as the year before. Um, and then we suddenly, you know, end up doing, you know, getting what we got. I and mean, it's just incredible, really, yeah. There were a few points that really hit home to me during the course of the week, particularly in some of your conversations with, with Lydia on Racing TV. And the first of those was when Honeysuckle won the, the champion hurdle. You, you were keen yeah. to remind us, and, and, and you did, uh, that it hasn't always swung your way. And you, you, you hark back to sizing Europe and when he was a strong fancy of the champion hurdle and the bitter disappointment of that. And it's a, it's a reminder that the road to, to Cheltenham Bridges is a long one and, and often quite bumpy. And does, that, does that make the, 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 the good moments even more special? Absolutely. I mean, so it's just it's so tough to win there. And, and I'm, I'm not the only one. Everyone has it. You know, the ups and downs of the place. And, and it's, that's, that's racing, really, to be honest. But there, it's even, even more so. And it's just so competitive. Um, and so, yeah, there's plenty of ups and downs. And, you, you know, that's why you really appreciate the ups when you get them. And, and in those early days, yeah, if, you, if there's an opportunity that's gone through your fingers, do you think, well, I'm never going to get that opportunity again? Is, is, is there a little bit of that playing on your mind? Yeah, there, of course there would be. Yeah, you know, it's not often you'd have a favourite for a champion hurdle. So obviously that year with Europe was um, a real blow, you know. Um, and so, yeah, of course it would. And, uh, but, you know, you just keep... Uh, <laughs> clawing your way back and, 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 and trying again and like as I said all week you know it's with the backing of brilliant clients that give us the opportunity to buy these horses and, and an amazing team of people working with us you know that's, that's the reality um, Henry we know that success breeds success but can you think can you identify turning points where your career moved up to another level really to, to, to get you to where you, you, you've got to now Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, in, in, in fairness to Alan and Anne Potts, when they first uh, sent us horses, you know, that was that was a massive moment. And um, rather interestingly, when, when their horses left as well, that was another big moment because a couple of weeks later, um, Chiggenstown um, increased their number of horses uh, with us, you know, and um, horses from Willie's at the time. And, and, you know, we've got some amazing, you know, Petty Mushua, Balca de Flo, uh, Valsalido, you know, so that was another uh, pivotal moment. And like, it's just, I don't know, and, and then we've had all our, you know, Barry Maloney's been with us since I started training, who was in a syndicate. Um, uh, you know, we've just, like, I'm, I'm not going to list everyone, you know, but... but uh, gradually, more and more people have supported us, and uh, you know it's it's, it's um, incredible, really. You mentioned Barry Maloney. We're going to speak to Barry in a in a little while, so he'll be able to he'll be able to chat to us from from his perspective. But 
I don't suppose you mind who you train a Gold Cup winner for, but did it make it that bit more special because it was him, because of your, your long-standing association? Yeah, I mean, it's special for everyone. You know, anyone, any winner there, there's a different story. Like, you know, that, that's the thing I, I find. Any winner, not even there, any winner you have, there's a different story. It, you know, um, they're so hard to get, um, but especially at Cheltenham. So, yeah, it was incredible to do it um, for Barry and, and the Maloney's. Um, uh, you know, we've been trying for a while, and, and it was. But, you know, it, 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 like I say, to do it for any any of our clients, because they're great supporters of ours, you, you just want to repay the faith they put in us, you know. Um, so um, it, the fact that it was Barry was brilliant, but it'd be amazing for, for, for any of them, yeah. How do you look at the race now in the sort of cold light of day Manila Indo length and a half in front of Apluta when when you look back on the race how do you how do you read it um, it was uh, I do yeah it like probably with disbelief still to be honest <laughs> um, uh, I was looking at it again this morning I was going to go and this didn't happen um, I, I think both jockeys I sort of said it even a few weeks ago. I didn't want to say they were, I, I, and I wasn't, I was just saying their horses like Dunman and Cato Star. I, I kind of always had, someone even said it about him, though after he won the Albert Bartlers, you know, he, he reminded them of Dunman, his style of racing. And um, I, 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 I think they're sort of similar types of horses. I'm not saying they're the same ability or whatever, but they're similar types of horses, the two of them. And, and I thought, thought both jockeys rode them brilliantly um, and, and exactly how I would have hoped when they were, you know, uh, beforehand that that's what they were going to do. Um, and, yeah, just um, uh, Indo just, you know, he kept staying, but he's, he, like, he's such a messer, you know, pricking his ears after jumping the second lap and then pricking them again coming to the line i mean i, I i'm not sure we've seen, we've seen the half of him he's, he's incredible he's, he's so tough and uh obviously alaho franking his form the day before because he could have questioned that form mid-season you know uh with both of them when they both came out of sort of novice company you could have questioned their form a little bit but that got really franked um and uh and then apt you know he he was he was brilliant. He kept at him, kept at, him, kept at him. Obviously, the one fear was, um, you know, would he get that? He has so much class. Would he get the last two furlongs? And, and he really did, in fairness to him. Uh, and wouldn't he have been a very impressive winner if Indo wasn't there beating a dual Gold Cup winner, you know? Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you were, were you a were you a CPT supporter? Yeah, Henry should point out Nick's been a big fan and was telling us all from a long time that stamina would be no issue, forensic examining of the, the pedigree. And Which I think initially we were hubering. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, what, I, what I, I hadn't reckoned with, but it was, it was quite obvious to me from a pretty early stage that the, the enemy was within, really, just because right. Manella Rindo looked like a completely different Manella Rindo to the one he'd looked like, looked like for the rest of the season. He was going with so much zest. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like, if you go back to Wexford the first day, you know, he eyeballed Milan native. And, I mean, they just went flat out for two miles seven around Wexford. And, and you know, he, he, he just kicked them away. You know, it was incredible. I thought what he did to a horse race at what he was raised at, you know. Um, but, of course, you can pick four, you know, holes in, in those smaller races. But... Um, you know, obviously the Savills was disappointing when he fell and we had to try and get a clear round. We, we probably would never have been going for the Irish Gold Cup if we hadn't fallen in the Savile. Uh, and our most important thing was to get a clear round and obviously win a But it was to get a clear round and I'd say that's probably, you know, saying that to Rachel going out. You, you know, it, uh, I don't know, but... but um, and she did exactly what we wanted. Unfortunately, he couldn't pick up. But he's a different horse at Cheltenham. You know, he, he proves it. He's proven it the last three years. Alaho beat him in Clonmel before the Albert Bartlett. Um, he only just got home in his beginner's chase. 
um, before the um, RSA, you know, you couldn't really fancy him. Obviously, he was 50 to 1 the first year. The second year, he was he, he was sh- much shorter because we all knew him a bit more. But he comes alive there. You know, he's, he was kicking his door that morning. I sent Barry a video of him. I mean, he was kicking his door. just And, and normally, he's asleep and then saddling him. He did what he did before the Albert Barton. He was just kicking the wall like he just wanted, to, you know, whatever it is. He just comes alive there. <clears throat> it's it's amazing. You can see that's a great shot, the overhead shot. You can really see his big old ears properly prick. I know, yeah. He's such a matter. Yeah. Um, Richard and I were just taught, obviously it was an amazing week for, for Rachel and she, she's a, apologised profusely to everyone that she can't join us this morning. She's incredibly busy today. She's got to get up to the down Patrick. Absolutely no rest for the, for the wicked. But you know, she captured everybody's imagination with absolutely brilliant riding throughout. Was it, could she ever really have ridden Minella Indo in the Gold Cup? I mean, it, I can't imagine how she could have got off Aplutar really. Um, I, look, I don't know. You know, that was her decision. I, I, I couldn't, you know, I just, I be it a maiden hurdle in, you know, Sligo or, or, or the Gold Cup. I, I, I just don't want to interfere on that, in that. Mm. Um, I think I'd hate to put her the wrong way. And I also think, to be fair on our clients, and, uh, you know, I, I, I just don't, I, I, it's her call. So that they both had great chances going into it and um, she had to unfortunately had to make a decision and that's the, the decision that she made but you know she's delighted for the horse, delighted for us and delighted for the Maloney's you know she's a real team player and um, you know she hasn't come out of the, you, you might feel sorry for her if she'd had no winner all week or whatever <laughs> but she hasn't come out of the week too badly herself. Um, we're going to hear from her in a, in a few moments because she gave a lovely interview to, to Gary O'Brien yesterday in uh, Thurlis. The Cheltenham to Thurlis to Downpatrick. It's a, it's a pretty exacting week for her. I'm sure she, she's letting the adrenaline carry her through and um, it's just showed what an amazing professional she is. Um, we'll talk about her a little bit more in just a second, Henry. So some lovely shots of Manella Rindo returning to the yard uh, yesterday. He's scampered down the box like a fresh horse. Yeah, he, as I say, he's funny, you know, he, he's always keeping a bit to himself. Um, yeah, he trotted up like a gazelle then, apparently, when, when he came off. So, um, yeah, no, he, he seems really good. And are we going to see him again this year? Yeah, I haven't really spoken to Barry about that, but um, I think Pontchastown um, would be great uh, if he seems good. Um, it's up to... Um, Maloney's will we'll see uh, as well. Obviously, we can go discuss it, and, and obviously, very much up to him. But he seemed pretty fresh and well yesterday, so I think we should um, uh, strongly consider Punchestown. Yeah. And do you think really the two of them, Manella Indo and Aplutar, are they just destined to knock heads in pretty much every three mile plus Grade One there is now? Is that is that them? Are they inextricably intertwined, or are you going to attempt to try and keep them apart? Well, funnily, <clears throat> Abu Tard is, uh, he, you know, his, uh, his form is just r- ridiculously better on left-handed tracks. So um, I think we might uh, try, uh, if, he's good, if he's well and everything, we, we might, uh, we're considering entry for him, um, uh, hopefully, for the three-mile chase there. Yeah. And, um, you know, that sort of limits him <clears throat> a little bit. So... Um, I, distant stuff, but the race at Haydock, I think, could be um, a lovely race for him as well in the autumn. You know, so um, when you, you know, when you have two of them like that, it, it's, it's obviously in, it, up to the owners at the at the end of the day. But you'd love to try and keep them apart as best you can, and the fact that he's better on the left hand of the track would would probably play a, a, a part. But if if, if you know, if they want to meet, well, then that's, you know, they will. That's, that's lovely, the, the idea we might see him not just once, but, but twice more here before, before next year's Gold Cup, hopefully. Uh, we'll talk about Honeysuckle in a moment, but I, I guess one of your star horses who might not get as much attention and publicity as she deserves this week is, is put the kettle on, because there weren't too many tougher performances than that. Yeah, she, 
<laughs> she was brilliant. <clears throat> she's, um, I, you know, she's just, uh, she defies everything, I think. Um, Aiden's amazing on her. You know, I was in the press conference afterwards, I was going, yeah, look, I don't know if it's Cheltenham or, you know, I don't know what it is. There was some other thing I was coming up with as well. Completely forgetting Aiden, who's the other link that he's unbeaten on her. And uh, so that at the end, I said, actually, you know what? Probably the, the, main, could, the main thing could be that it's Aiden. You know, he's brilliant on her. He gets such a tune out of her. Like he's true at the last three. Um, uh, uh, she's so willing for him, and they just uh, have a great um, relationship. And then she seems to love Cheltenham as well. Um, she was a. She was. I was never probably going to Leopardstown at Christmas. I just didn't think um, that track would suit her. We were planning to go to Kempton. Obviously, we had the travel ban came in, so herself and Mona Lee couldn't go. So. Um, Although she was well beaten that day, I thought she ran well for a big open track. And you just have to take the Cheltenham factor and maybe, you know, and the, the Aiden factor into account with her, you know, because they just do so well there. Um, and that's all we have to hope. Mid February, I said it to Mary Darmody, will we, you know, should we consider the Mare's chase? And um, she said, yeah, you know, we'll chat about it and see. So, um, and then I happened to read the stats on the Arkle winners, which I'd forgotten. And that was what made me go for the, uh, the champion chase with, with Sizing Europe um, back in 2011. Um, Alan was keen to go for the Gold Cup, but I actually just said, look, I don't know if I can win you the Gold Cup, but I'm, you know, I think we'll, we could win the champion chase. Having, you know, knowing the stats and, and um, so... Uh, Reread those and they're just ridiculous. Um, like out of 10 winners of seven, uh, 10 Arco winners, seven or six have gone on to win the Queen Mother. It's, it's something crazy anyhow. And it, I happened to read that and rang Mary back and I said, look, if you're, if you're keen, and Mary was always leaning towards the champion chase. If you're keen, yeah, I'm really happy to go for that. And that was it. Yeah. It, if the cards had just fallen slightly differently, you could have ended up winning the mayor's chase with, with put the kettle on and dare I say it, another mayor's hurdle with with honeysuckle, but I knew that wasn't the case because the honeysuckle plan had been quite a long time in the in the creating, hadn't it? Yeah, it had. You know, now we, like we had to see um, <clears throat> we had to see those um, performances. You know, it was still down to the Irish champion hurdle this year. You know, if, if, if you got beaten or or just got up. You know, like if you put in a Hatton's Grace run in the Irish Champion Hurdle, well, then you might have been looking back at, at um, the Mayor's Hurdle again, you know. But um, uh, fortunately, she put in that amazing performance. And, yeah, last year it was the case of we wanted to go for the Mayor's Hurdle. We thought it was our best chance. And um, when we, you know, obviously wanted her to win and get a winner for Kenny at Cheltenham. And this year, yeah, we were happy to roll the dice a little bit more. And then obviously after the Irish Champion, the Honey made the decision. We didn't, you know, she just said, look, this is where I'm going after winning the Irish Champion Hurdle. You know, she made it very clear where she wanted to go. Uh, she obviously really is in the absolute prime of her life, peak of condition. I know she's unbeaten, but she's she looked a completely different ball game the last couple of times, uh, Henry. Is, it, is that just maturity, just exceptional well-being? What do you think that is? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, um, she's, you know, like she feels like she's been around a long time, but she's only seven, you know. So last six-year-old winning the marriage hurdle, you know, that was pretty good. And um, uh, but I don't know. The, the, yeah, I'd say all of that, but she just has like even I don't know. I just I think she just has this thing that no one's going past her. Like she's winning, and that's just it. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but um, even on the beach, you know, working her there a couple of weeks before my, my um, daughter was with me and she was like, just watching honey, her head is down and her, you know, the horse she was upside was sort of, and it's just not going past her. Like it, it's, it's mad, you know, she, she just doesn't want to get beaten. You know, I think she showed that in the Mary's hurdle last year, you know, when it was so tight that happens grace this year, you know, she just, she just keeps finding. Yeah. How useful, Henry, has the, the Mayor's programme been in sort of laying the foundation for her? You mentioned, obviously, you had that as your platform 
last year. How useful is it in bringing on that type of horse and before you have to really throw them in at the deep end? Well, for a guy that uh, five years ago, everyone keeps reminding me, uh, was going around saying, I can't ch train mares. Um, uh, I, I was, um, I think it's, it's, um, I was probably giving out about it then, but no, it's, it's brilliant. It's, so it's actually opened up a whole new industry when you're seeing Philly foals making in nickel. No, you know, from, from the breeding side of things, like, you know, 10 years ago, you just didn't want a Philly foal. Now, now you, you know, you do. It's, it's, it's so from, from the grassroots. It's, it's, I think it's opened up. It, it's actually developed a whole new industry. I really do. Um, those standout mares, okay, they've always had a value, but um, now, you know, Honey's, her pedigree was light, you know, but um, um, uh, like they, they, she still, okay, she made Asia 10 grand, but, but because uh, Phillies were starting to have a value coming out of point to point, like a four year old maiden point to point Philly mares maiden point to point winner ten years ago wouldn't make a whole lot, you know. Uh, three years ago we you know, you're seeing them making three and four hundred thousand. Like it's just incredible. So I think it's it's opened up a whole new market, which is brilliant. Yeah. And, and look now what it's led to, you know, mares winning all the championships, you know, a lot of the championship races, you know. And, and I talked to Peter Maloney the other day, uh, the racing manager to Kenny Alexander. Kenny was on the show last week uh, and, you know, they both said that there was a plan at some point to, to go chasing and they thought that might be that might be next year. But obviously this might have changed the game. What's what's your sort of instinct with that? Yeah, look, it's obviously something we'd have to give a lot of thought to. And ultimately, I think it comes down to Kenny. You know, she's obviously an extremely valuable mare. It's probably a little bit more risk over fences. But funny, you know, and I don't want to tempt face, but she um, goes off loose uh, every Sunday morning in our indoor. And she actually takes off and just goes off jumping for sport. And... Um, and um, she jumps, so she, every Sunday morning she jumps a chase fence about four times. Um, and she loves it. Uh, now, I haven't actually schooled her outside, but she's a point to point winner. She's jumping this sort of baby chase fence every Sunday morning. So she makes that shape over um, hurdles. So if Kenny said he'd like to do that, uh, yeah, I, you know. Um, but I, I think it's something we all need to discuss pros and cons and uh, and then ultimately it's and Kenny what he would like to do I, I did ask I, but Peter and I were having a, having some sport about it earlier in the week on my podcast and I, I did say is the dawn run thing crossed your mind and he said I'd be lying if I said it hadn't <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right yeah yeah he, he certainly uh, mentioned that to me uh, a while back he's got a little quieter about it now though recently <laughs> We're winning all these champion hurdles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, if you're, if you're as you are and as he is, absolutely steeped in the history and the context of the game, it's going to be something that's going to float your boat, isn't it? That's the thing. It's going to. Yeah. B b thinking, oh, I could do what Dawn Run did. Yeah, I know. It'd be incredible. Yeah. And she was from Waterford. Well, certainly the owner was. Sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah, look, it, it would be amazing. That stuff, you know. Um, uh, yeah, look, well, that's another conversation, I think. But I have to be said, like Peter's got such great input in the whole thing as well. Like he's he's brilliant. Um, to be, uh, and obviously Kenny, but yeah, both of them are great to be, yeah, in, in the managing of them. Uh, you know, they they just do want to do everything. I like everyone. They want to do everything uh, yeah. right for her. Um. I, I've kept you so long, and I, I, but, I, but we had so much to talk about. I've just a couple more things I wanted to touch on, um, and I'll save the best to last. But first of all, uh, Bob Ollinger in the in the Ballymore. I mean, he looks another absolute beast. I mean, a proper beast. This horse could this be yeah. better than all of them eventually? Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. But uh, yeah, we uh, Pat Doyle had him. He won his point to points. We were lucky enough. Um, Brian Ashton, Rob Cor were happy to buy him. Um, Ken Park Hill trained him. Or the bred him, should I say? You know, brilliant breeding operation up there. And um, 
yeah, he's he's always worked uh, like an extremely good horse. He actually came at the Cheltenham Horses last year to a place we go to uh, for a gallop, and he sort of worked as well as them, if not better than a couple. And uh, we were kind of getting pretty excited about him then. Um, he's got a lot of class, and um, I was uh, sort of always heading two miles uh, through the summer and into the autumn, you know, didn't want to go to Nace for a lesser maiden hurdle. I wanted to go to Goran and take on Ferdy Hollow, uh, thinking we'd be that we'd win that and whatever else. But uh, anyway, we got beat. And in fairness to the team here, and well, Rachel just said, "I don't think it really matters where you go." Um, but um, uh, fairness to the team and, and Brian, you know, they said, "Look, let's give two and a half a go and let's see where we're at there." So we stepped them up and. Yeah, he seems to just be able to quicken off. You know, he, he's, he's just got a horse that's got a lot of pace. He seems to stay. He seems to have a lot of things. Yeah. Sometimes, Henry, you, you just see a rider around Cheltenham who just seems to have the place exactly where they want it. I mean, we saw that this week in, in Jack Kennedy and particularly in, in Rachel Blackmore. You must have been asked this question 5,000 times, but I'll ask it for the 5,000 and first. Why is she so good? What is it that makes her so good and so successful? Um, it's, I, you, you know, she's just, um, she works hard, has had to work hard, obviously really hard. I and, mean, you know, a 20 year or a 10, it's five, 10 year overnight success. Do you know what I mean? She's just had to put all that work in, has had all the knocks, you know, kind of like I know the feeling and, and, and you know you just have to keep working your way through it, knock, try and step forward, knock back and step forward, you know and and, um, and she appreciates the you know what it takes to um, uh, be at the top of, of, of this game, you know she's, she's an incredible um, she's just brilliant to work with um, uh, you know has every race planned out as long as I don't interfere. Um, I thought some of her rides were just brilliant. She, you know, tell me something, girl from the back, um, Bob Ollinger, the, <coughs> the top of the hill, someone came up size her, tried to pull her in to start racing. Then she checks them and pulls them back, you know, out of the race till, till the second last. Honey, uh, you know, I'm used to seeing Honey first two or three and kind of when she was passing me uh, with a circuit to go, I was, I'm looking at her six, my God, but felt very comfortable. You know, she so tactically British. She's just a brilliant rider and a great person. You know, to be fair, that's the easiest. I probably should have just said that at the start. <laughs> 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 um, well, the, the tributes are extremely well deserved and long may they continue to flow. I've kept you long enough, Henry, um, but I'm sure you'll agree it was well worth talking about. Thanks so much. One of, one of my topics I don't mind talking about at the moment, Nick. And yeah, I have to say, yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, it was brilliant. And I have to say all credit to Cheltenham, you know, um, Jennifer Pugh, Jennifer Walsh, Barbara White. They were brilliant they, for us, you know, just um, organizing us all and making sure we had everything done right. BHA, everybody, the protocols were brilliant. We were looked after amazingly. And, um, I wasn't surprised at all with what was raised because, you know, we couldn't believe how well we were welcomed and looked after over there. So um, it was great. It felt like a really good week from the inside on it. And next year, all you've got to do is come back and win all four major races because <laughs> anything less, frankly, is a no, no, damn disappointment. <laughs> Same thought processes every year. One winner. If we can just get one winner, we'll be happy. So there you go. Back to that process again now. Yeah. I'll remind you of that when you scrambled home in the Martin Pipe next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It could easily happen. It could easily happen. Uh, we'll they're, they're, they're very special horses, Henry. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks a million. Okay. Henry de Bromhead, who dominated the Cheltenham Festival, and one of those horses.